Hello everyone, welcome back to Exademy Redefining Education. My name is Prabhash Kumar and I am teaching you Engineering Mathematics. We are into first chapter which is basic concepts of Engineering Mathematics and we have entered into lesson number 12 which is Analytic Geometry and in this lecture we will be seeing about ellipse. So what are the things we have already covered in Analytic Geometry? We have covered two dimensional coordinate system, a straight line, circle, conic sections, parabola and in this video we will be seeing ellipse. So let's start. Let's have an overview what an ellipse is. Just see this diagram carefully. Okay. Just don't see all these things at once. Whatever I am just saying, uh, try to uh, visualize accordingly. Okay. So this is the blue curve as you can see. So this is called ellipse. This blue color curve, this is called ellipse. Okay. So the locus of a point P whose distance from a fixed point S and S dash bears a constant ratio E less than 1 to its distance from a fixed line KZ and K dash Z dash is called an ellipse. Just like we, de uh, we uh, defined our parabola in the previous video, we defined parabola in terms of locus. So in this video, we will be defining what an ellipse is and ellipse is also defined in the form of locus. So let us consider a point P here. And so suppose you are taking a distance from this line KZ and you are taking a distance from point P to S. So whether you take this distance or this distance but the ratio of these two lengths will always be less than 1. Now if you are in a second quadrant, so let's say suppose you are your point P is here, somewhere here. So if you are measuring the distance P from here, so that means you are measuring this distance from k dash z dash and if you are measuring the distance from point p to s dash so this ratio of these lengths will again be less than 1. Now if you are in the third quadrant say suppose you have a, your point is p somewhere here and if you are measuring the length from k dash z dash and again you are measuring your length from s dash so again if you take the ratio of these two lengths then their ratio will be less than 1. If you are in the fourth quadrant and let's say your point P is somewhere here and if you are measuring your length from here to here and you are measuring your length from here to here, even then the ratio of these two lengths will be less than 1. So that ratio is called as eccentricity and that is constant but it is less than 1. Okay, so this locus of the point P which is revolving around this line, so that locus is called as your ellipse. Clear? The definition of ellipse is clear to you. Now there are many things to learn here. As you can see we have got a blue curve. So this is called ellipse. Right? Now this point A dash and this point A. This is called vertex. What is this, what is this called? This is called vertex. So this point B and this point B dash this is called covertex. See all these four points are vertex but in order to differentiate it what is the difference between A dash A and B, B dash? So we have given a special name called covertex. Now, as you can see this egg, so this egg is lying horizontally down, right? So the distance measured from this A dash to A, so this is called the major axis. What is this called? This, this axis is called the major axis of the ellipse. And this vertical distance from B to B dash, this is called a minor axis. So A A dash is called the major axis, B B dash is called the minor axis. Fine. Now these two points that is S and S dash, these two points are called the focus. So S is also the focus, S dash is also the focus. So the coordinate for this center for this particular ellipse, we have taken this as a center as 0 comma 0. So this is 0 comma 0. This center, this uh, focus point coordinate is A E comma 0 and this vertex coordinate is a comma 0 right so this is a comma 0 this is uh, a comma 0 this is 0 comma 0 and this is minus a comma 0 why because we are going towards on the left that means on the negative x axis so this will be minus a comma 0 this will be also minus a comma 0 fine so vertex is clear to you focus is clear to you center is also clear to you this locus ellipse is also clear to you there are some more things so these two lines, vertical lines as you can see, these two vertical lines are called directrix. What is this called? Directrix. So the coordinate for this particular directrix is minus a upon e comma 0 and the directrix and the equation for are the coordinate for this is a by e comma 0. So can you tell me what will be the equation for this left directrix? Yes, it will be x equals to minus a by e. 
right and here x will be equal to a by e okay now we have got one special term called latest rectum just like we had the same in the parabola so we are having here lat latest rectum so latest rectum can be calculated using this formula that is 2b square upon a so this length is given by 2b square upon a now how will you find a how will you find b see here so this is called a semi major axis what is this total called this total is length is called the major axis so this half of this length is called the semi major axis got it now similarly we have this so this is called minor axis so half of this length is called the semi minor axis so this length if that if this length is called a this length is called b so what is the total length it will be 2a and what will be the total length for this this will be 2b i hope the entire picture is clear to you moreover we have got one standard equation for our, our ellipse so that is x square upon a square plus y square by b square equals to 1 so whenever you see such type of equation just uh, it should click in your mind that it this this is nothing but an equation of an ellipse all right now as we have seen that there are two types of principal axis one is major axis second is minor axis right so length of the major axis as you know this is 2a so this length is a so the length of the major axis is 2a the length of minor axis this is semi minor axis is b so the length of minor axis is 2b got it now how will you get the value of eccentricity for finding the value of eccentricity you need to do root under a square minus b square divided by a okay so e will be found using this formula that is root under of a square minus b square upon a how to get the values of a b we have already seen now two focus are there so the plural of focus is foci okay so here s dash so what is this location s dash s dash uh, coordinate is minus a comma 0 and s coordinate is a comma 0 got it so as you have got the value of a as you have got the value of e simply you need to multiply this get the value of this coordinates s and s dash moreover there are two vertices as we have seen a dash and a which is minus a comma 0 and a which is a comma 0 so these are the vertices a minus a comma 0 and a comma 0 now if you are asked to find what are the co vertex co vertices a co vertex so that will be 0 comma b and 0 comma minus b got it now what will be the length of the latest, latest rectum? We have already seen this to be square upon a equation of directrix. We have already seen this x will be equal to plus minus a by e. Got it. Now just like in parabola we had seen one parametric equation that means equation in terms of some other third variable. So similarly for ellipse we have got a parametric equation. So for this parametric equation x will be equal to a cos t, y will be equal to b sin t. Got it. Now please do care of this. Take note of this because if you don't don't note this then when we'll be entering into calculus and the double triple integrals and the volume formation and surface of volume formation volume calculation and all those critical parts and difficult parts of calculus you will miss it out okay so generally it is the tendency of the students that they skip this please don't skip it is rather more very important okay so please make sure what is the parametric equation for parabola what is the parametric equation for ellipse and hyperbola in the upcoming videos okay now once again see this this red color curve as you can see this red color egg egg shaped anda so this is called what this is called ellipse now we have seen that these points are called the vertex these points are called the co-vertex this is called the center these points are called the focus okay so this is major semi major axis this is semi minor axis and the distance from the center to the focus is called the linear eccentricity got it so now let's see what is the standard equation for an ellipse the standard equation for an ellipse that we have is x minus h whole square divided by a square plus y minus k whole square by b square equals to 1. Now suppose you, this is the ellipse and you know the center values that is 5 comma 3 and the semi major axis 4 is given and semi minor axis 2 is given to you, origin point is given to you. Okay, so if you, all these things are given you can easily frame the equation. How? If you compare this, so as you know very well what is this 5 comma 3? This is nothing but your uh, center of the ellipse so here the h value is 5 k value is 3 and a value is 4 and b value is 2 got it so a is equal to 4 b is equal to 2 h is equal to 5 k is equal to 3 when you have got all these values simply you need to substitute in the standard you will get the standard equation for this particular ellipse okay 
Now, one thing has to be noted that we have two types of andas. One is a horizontal anda, one is a vertical anda. Okay, so this horizontal anda will be called a horizontal anda if A will be greater than A, A will be greater than B. That is, your semi-major axis length will be more than the semi-minor axis. Got it? Now, if your semi-major axis length is less than the semi-minor axis, that will become a vertical anda. Okay, now these two points, as you can see, these are the center points for this ellipse. So that is H comma K. Now, once you know all these, so what is the standard equation? X minus H whole square by A square plus Y minus K whole square by B square equals to 1. So, this is the standard equation for any anda or ellipse. Now, one question for you that is sketch the curve for the, no, this question is for me. So, sketch the curve for the following ellipse. I will show you how to sketch the curve for an ellipse. Then I will give you one question. Step 1, compare from the standard equation and find. Okay, so uh, this is the equation given. Now you need to compare this from the standard equation. So the standard equation that we have is x minus h whole square by a square plus y minus k whole square by b square equals to 1. So when you compare this, so h value is 0, k value is 0, a square is 100, b square is 64. Now if a square is 100, that means it is a 2 degree equation. So that means it will be having 2 roots. So it will be 2 values of a that is a equals to plus minus 10, b equals to plus minus 8. Got it? Moreover, once we have found all these values, so in the move to step 2, then the step 2 go and check whether the given ellipse is a horizontal ellipse or a vertical ellipse. How to check that? If the value of A is greater than B, then the ellipse with the horizontal axis has the major axis and if the A is less than B, then the ellipse with vertical axis will be the major axis. That means if A value is greater than B, that will become a horizontal anda and if A is less than B, that will become a vertical anda. Okay. Now, if you are comparing this, just now we have found that A is equal to 100. Okay. Now, B is equal to, no sorry, here we did a mistake here. A square is 100, so that means A is plus minus 10, right. And B square is 64, that is B is plus minus 8. So, let's see the magnitude itself. So, A is 10, so here it should be A 10 and B it should be 8, okay. Even then, your A is coming greater than equal to B. So, if A is greater than or equal to B, so that will be a horizontal ellipse. Got it? Now, find the vertices minus A comma 0, A comma 0, 0 comma B, 0 comma minus B. Okay. So, once you have all these values, simply you need to do the A square equals to 100. A will be plus minus 10. So, you got the vertices as 10 comma 0, minus 10 comma 0. Similarly, find the co-vertices that is B square equals to 64. You will get the values as 0 comma 8 and 0 comma minus 8. Moving to next, in the next step you need to calculate the value of the foci, where the location of the focus is. So the value of C will be equal to root under of A square minus B square. A square is given as 100, B square is given as 64. Now you simply substitute here, you will get the value of C as root 36 which is again plus minus 6. So as you can see that we have two focus, isn't it, which is called foci. So this is focus 1, focus 2. Simply you need to mark it on the graph. Now, you have collected all the data, simply you need to plot this. So, we have this equation that is given x square by 100 plus y square by 64 equals to 1. So, F is, as you can compare, so we have already compared that a is greater than b. So, that means this uh, ellipse will, will be a horizontal ellipse, right? So, h comma k is 0 comma 0. Vertices we have already found that is 10 comma 0 minus 10 comma 0. Y intercepts we have already found that is 0 comma 8 and 0 comma minus 8. And focus we have also found that is 6 comma 0 and minus 6 comma 0. Once you have already found all these things, what's the problem in drawing this uh, ellipse? Simply you need to sketch it mark all the points and make this under. Okay. Now, this is one task for you again. So, 25x square plus y square equals to 25. So, in the previous video of the parabola, I had given one question and congratulations to Mr. Pawan Kalyan ji. He had given me a correct solution. Okay. So, I expect more and more number of students should send me this solution because I like it actually. Means, I, I feel uh, proud or rather I feel arrogant a little enough that means my teachings are quite benefiting you. Okay. And so you are learning something. Okay. So if you find my videos interesting and easy, simple, crisp and uh, beneficial for you, please do note down this question in your notebook. Solve this. Take a snapshot. Drop the snapshot to this WhatsApp number. Okay. So let's have some good connections. Now, eccentricity, talking about eccentricity, let's have a physical significance as you can, as you know very well that earth revolves around the sun. Isn't it? Many of the people might be thinking sun revolves around the sun. Even now, 
anyways so earth revolves around the sun in and which orbit in an elliptical orbit so here lies the concept of it you read all these things the eccentricity of an ellipse is a measure of how elongated it is if the eccentricity approaches zero the curve becomes more circular as in the circle chapter i had told you that circle is nothing but a special case of ellipse remember so when an ellipse will become equal to circle when a val value will be equal to b value got it so then ellipse will become a circle so here the value is less than 1 okay so if it approaches 1 so the ellipse will become more elongated moreover eccentricity is given by c by okay all these things are there theoretical portions go through it and the semi major axis approximate can you imagine how much big the semi major axis is there in the elliptical orbit in which the sun is revolving around them. so we are nothing we are tiny dot okay and this was developed or not developed discovered by mr kepler in 1610 he found that all these things do phenomenon happen so if you have interest in astronomy do search for all these questions okay so my job was to make you understand what uh, what is the procedure to solve or sketch an ellipse okay so if you find it interesting then uh, do solve the questions we'll be meeting up in the next video with some more interesting topics till then stay connected with us and one thing more please drop down the solutions okay comment it i, I it's quite comfortable for me actually to make up the videos it gives me a motivation when you interact okay so if you want me to continue with my videos please do comment it otherwise i'll switch off the channel okay i'm seeing that no response is coming fine see you in the next video bye bye take care